to our advent series. It is day 22 and we are folding laundry because once again, <laughs> laundry. <laughs> but today's Bible passage is John 1 14. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us and we have seen his glory. Glory as of the only son from the father, full of grace and truth. This is probably one of the most Christmassy passages. Let's go ahead and give Faith a little pop quiz live. Ready? Here we go. When it says, that Jesus dwelt among us. Mm -hmm. What from the Greek word is that also referring to? Incarnation? Yes. But Jesus dwelling among us, the word dwelling, what does that also mean in this passage? I don't know what you're going with. Pitching a tent? Tabernacle among us. He, he gave me that answer. Tabernacled among us, you're right, Joseph. Whenever it says that Jesus dwelt among us, it's First of all, that Jesus truly dwelt among us, fully human, on our level, Emmanuel, God with us in the flesh. But also, it's referring to God dwelling with us, or literally the word dwell, Jesus pitched his tent with us, or tabernacled with us. This brings back the Old Testament way of being surrounded by others and being with others. And so Jesus pitched his tent, implanted himself, in the community with people fully on their level, tabernacling among us. Yes, the word became flesh and dwelt tabernacled among us, but also the word became flesh, the word, capital W, that should bring us all the way back to Genesis one and God spoke and let there be light and the spirit of God hovering over the waters. There's this very Trinitarian aspect of this. Additionally, this is John one. This is John chapter one, the prologue to the whole gospel. This is very theologically rich, these first 18 verses of John one. We've studied this in my John series. I can link it at the end of this. This video, the word becoming flesh and dwelling among us, the very word that spoke into existence, creation and humankind and birds and mountains and air became creation for us. It's beautiful play on words here. And then also, and we have seen his glory, the glory as the only son from the father, full of grace and truth. Here in the prologue, grace and truth are repeated because Jesus isn't just grace like Santa Claus, just giving to undeserving bratty children. <laughs> Jesus isn't just truth like the law, you must keep it and you're not measuring up. He is grace and he's truth perfectly met in his own flesh. We have some Bluey pajamas here if you haven't checked out Bluey before. So go to Bluey, type in Joe and Faith Power Couple, receive <laughs> loves plugging these fake sponsorships. Someone's gonna <laughs> think you're real. Full of grace and truth, the word became flesh. You know, we're sitting here doing something very mundane. I wasn't planning on going here, but like, this is so applicable. We're folding laundry. This is so human. Like humans have to wear clothes because of the fall. We have to do laundry. We have to fold. We have to, like there's nothing more like human than folding my child's underwear <laughs> with skin marks on it, you know, or whatever. Like there's nothing more human than this and being in touch with your human limits, right? And Jesus took on that flesh and met us in love that way. It's beautiful. And so if you find yourself caught up in the mundane this Christmas, maybe you are caught up in just trying to live, never mind all the extra holiday stuff. Maybe you can't afford all the extra holiday stuff. Maybe you don't have family to do the extra holiday stuff with. Wherever you find yourself today, know that Christ came to meet you in the mundane. You don't have to add all the extra holiday stuff to be met by him or to understand Christmas. It's not about the lights. It's not about the trees. It's not about the gifts. We don't have any of that here right now. We're just doing laundry and the Lord's meeting us through his very word because it's alive and active. That's right. Work hard, play hard, 365 days. You guys can read this on here. Slaying it, 365 days of the year, work hard, play hard. 365 days of the year, that actually reminds me of the Grace Bible Reading Plan, <laughs> reading through the Bible in 365 days. <laughs> hey, would you like to comment on this? Yes, I am relaunching my Grace Bible Reading Plan. And I would love for you guys to join me reading through the Bible this next year. I also am watching my cliff notes through every single book of the Bible. They give you like the boiled down version of what I think you really need to know to go deeper in your Bible studies. If you're not just content with surface level Christianity, but you wanna know God's word deeper, you really wanna understand Isaiah, or you really want Jeremiah to infect your life even today, then check out my cliff notes and and read through the Bible with me. It with my Grace Bible reading plan. There's 90 days of grace days for if you're like me 
and you need a grace day every so often. I took every single one of my 90 grace days, or is it 95? Whatever. I took every single one of my grace days and then even more and had to like book it to end it this year on time. But like we all need grace and it's not about us being enough or measuring up enough. It's just about enjoying God's word. And I think sometimes we enjoy it more when we give ourselves those grace days. I have all of these resources, the cliff notes, the reading plan. I even have Bible study bootcamp. All of that is on the link down below. So you check that out if you want to join me going deeper in your Bible studies this next year and really knowing God and his word becoming alive so that it affects everything, your life, even the mundane folding of laundry. I would love for you guys to join me. Check it out in the link below. All the resources I talked about earlier, like the Grace Bible reading plan here. I'll see you guys there. Bye.